Hey, what's up guys? Jay's Two Cents here. And if you live anywhere on the West Coast, or I guess Southern California area, Arizona, Nevada, you guys know it's starting to get warm already and it's only March. So instead of waiting all the way till June, like I normally do to start bringing the water cooling videos, I'm gonna keep this train going. I already showed you guys how I set up the water cooling pump for the Parvum Veer 1.0 build. And uh, that thing is coming along nicely. That's, it's right there. It's pretty epic. But I digress. We're gonna go ahead and move into today's topic, which is all about hard tubes for your computer, for your, com your computer tubes. Get your dirty mind out of the gutter. Come on, don't tell me you weren't thinking it. Hard tube, you, you just you giggity giggity when you hear that. The new EVGA Silent Series power supplies offer excellent silence and efficiency through their new EVGA Eco Mode technology and also features a seven year warranty for worry free gaming. Click the link in the description to learn more. Now hard tubing is actually nothing new. In fact, it was around years ago when it came to water cooling and stuff, but it just didn't take off because it didn't have enough aftermarket support. In fact, most people were going with things like copper pipe and stuff, which is readily available at like Home Depot. You can get hard copper stock and you can cut it down and bend it pretty easily with a mandrel bender and have some pretty sick looking builds. It just didn't have enough aftermarket support when it came to things like fittings and you were stuck using those really ugly compression uh, press, in, press in fittings you find again in the plumbing section of Home Depot. Now unless you were doing some sort of a really cool steampunk build, all those brass fittings and stuff just didn't look very good. And let's face it, steampunk is cool, but if that's your only option then it really wasn't readily considered amongst most mainstream builders or people just looking to do some sort of a cool rigid tubing build in their system. So today we're gonna to be talking about a couple of different products here from AlphaCool. Now we're gonna be taking a look today at their rigid uh, fittings. We're gonna be taking a look at some of the rigid tubing and we're gonna show you guys a couple of different options now that may be actually considerable uh, for your next build. Now rigid fittings are a pretty big deal because unlike soft tubing where you have the tubing being clamped down on a barb and it has actually teeth to grab onto, Rigid tubing is something that's always been a little bit scary to people because the only thing holding it in is an O-ring. And that O-ring, if you guys think about that, is not a very high friction piece. And so things like jostling or shipping it or moving it around always freak people out because it could just pop right out. Well, now if we fast forward several years uh, as hardline fittings started to become more popular again in the last couple of years, now just about everybody has some sort of a compression fitting. And that's exactly what we're looking at here today. Now, unlike soft tubing, where you can find measurements both for Europe in the millimeters, uh, in the United States, you can find them, you know, three eighths, half inch, three quarter inch outer diameter. Uh, all hardline fittings are pretty much measured in millimeters. And I'm sure that makes a lot of the people out there in Europe very, very happy. Uh, it kind of made things hard for me to get used to because I don't do the, the millimeters, unless it's photography, then I understand millimeters pretty well. But this fitting right here is actually their 10 by 13 millimeters. So that means that, for instance, I have a 10 by 13 millimeter piece of PETG tubing right here. So as I'm dropping it all over the place, I didn't play wide receiver in football, folks. I played lineman. It's really a thankless job. If you're a lineman, you know what I'm talking about. But no, so those measurements are the measurements of the internal opening as well as the overall width. So in this case, it is 10 millimeters in the opening of the center of the tube and 13 millimeters on the outside. Now, when it comes to the fittings, it's the outside measurement or that 13 millimeter, which makes the big difference. For instance, if you're talking about things like Bits Power uh, Crystal Link, it's a 12 millimeter outside diameter and that one millimeter makes a huge, huge difference. It's not gonna work. You can't put a 12 in a 13 and you can't cram a 13 into a 12. The jokes, the jokes are real. But now that we understand how the sizing works, now you'll understand what it is you're actually looking at. If you take a look at these two tubes, you can see one is clearly much bigger than the other because a lot of people liked half inch inner diameter, three quarter inch outer diameter soft tubing because it was large, it made the system look more full and you can get a higher flow of a flow rate with a higher internal diameter. Uh, companies have started coming out now with the half inch inner diameter, uh, which you can see now this tubing practically fits inside that tubing. Now I'm not gonna shove it in there. I, again, the struggle is real to keep this video clean. 
But just to give you an example of the bigger tube here, the inner diameter is 12 and the outer diameter is 16. And now you have multiple options with fittings to use a larger tube like this, which makes things look even cooler in a big system like behind me with Skunk Works. Uh, if this had been available at the time, I would have probably considered using this over this. Now their compression fittings are actually really, really simple to use. Um, you have a flat disc washer here, as well as an internal O-ring that slides over the tube and gets pressed against that flat washer, as well as an O-ring inside of the fitting itself. Now, before I demonstrate how it works, one thing that's also nice to see is in the actual threaded part of the fitting, it is a hex head. So one of the things that kind of sucks is sometimes when you clamp down on a compression fitting with an O-ring really tight and you go to loosen it, you actually end up loosening the whole fitting out of the radiator or the pump or whatever it's connected to, and you have a problem getting these two halves apart. Well now, because of the way that they've done this, you could stick an Allen wrench inside the fitting and get a nice good leverage to get the two halves apart. Okay, so now for an example here, I've got my Alpha Cool radiator. I bet you guys can't tell who sponsored today's video. We're gonna go ahead and thread this in. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention too is it also has an O-ring as most fittings do now, also on the G quarter thread uh, side of the fitting so that you get a nice seal against the item that you are putting your fitting into, whether it be radiator, GPU block, CPU block, pump, or reservoir. And you can also use that Allen key to tighten that up on there. You don't wanna over tighten or you'll strip the threads. Remember they are just brass on both ends. They are fairly soft material. But once you have the fitting in there, then basically you're gonna take your flat disc, your O-ring, as well as your compression, and you're gonna put the compression housing over first. Then you're gonna put the flat disc washer on, or drop it on the floor. You're gonna take the flat washer end and put that against the cap. And then you're gonna take the O-ring and just slide it over, over the tip, the tip of the tube. I think, I'll just let you guys think whatever you wanna think. I'm, I'm just gonna stop. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the tube and you're gonna gently insert it inside the opening. This is hard, guys. This, no matter what I say, I'm in the wrong today. And I'm just gonna keep this in the video because this is actually kind of fun, even though I'm the only one in this room laughing. <laughs> My own innuendos. Not kidding, guys, the struggle is real. Okay, gently take your tube, uh, slightly twist it as you put it in there, move the O-ring down against the opening, take your flat washer, make sure it's against the opening, or the uh, O-ring, and then you're gonna just tighten them the compression until it's as tight as you can get it. Now I wouldn't take a wrench and wrench down on this because then you'll, you can end up crushing or cracking the tube and that will be just as bad. You don't, you don't wanna bend or crack your tube, that's a bad day. Uh, there you go. So now you've taken your radiator and turned it into a male. But as you can see, it holds in there pretty good. Um, it's not as sturdy as some of the other fittings I have used. It's a little bit of a concern of mine, so I wouldn't go, you know, I wouldn't put any dangling parts off of this, like letting it support anything. You're, once you have the two ends secured, it's not gonna go anywhere and it holds tight. Um, but one thing to point out though, is that you can actually twist and pull it right out with the compression still on. Now it fits really, really tight. In fact, if it's tight enough to where I, when I twisted it, it actually put some marks in the acrylic. Uh, but I can't get it back in. Remember, the only thing holding this thing together is an O-ring, so you can only get so much of a connection with just rubber. But let's say acrylic's not your thing. Maybe you are one of those guys, like I mentioned earlier, you've considered doing metal piping, and you think metal piping would be uh, a high level of badassery. Well, AlphaCool also has something else that they have developed here. Metal tubing. Yeah. Now this is actually their black chrome. They have regular chrome and their black chrome. I thought this looked pretty freaking awesome. Um, you can't bend this. I wouldn't recommend bending it. If you do, the, coated, the, the plating will probably crack. Um, but you can hacksaw it and then dremel or sand the edges. And then you can put it all together the same way that I showed you with the acrylic. You just take your cap, put it over the tip. Here, here, we, here we go again, guys. Uh, assemble it all together like I mentioned before. You don't have to be as gentle on this one because you've got a black tube on this one. Whatever, guys, I'm just going with it. Screw it down. And then as you see, you now could have metal piping. In fact, the metal pipe seems to be a little bit sturdier in there, but it's heavier 
as well. This is a pretty heavy pipe because I, it is pretty much brass. The plating is very good on these. In fact, the, the chrome plating or nickel plating on these is very, very uniform yet thin because uh, tolerances are important so they can't put thick nickel plating on there. It is a knurled fitting so that you can get a good grip on there with your fingers. And uh, everything about this fitting is, I have no problems using this. In fact, I'm gonna be putting these in a build in the future. Uh, but yeah, with so many companies on the market, Alpha Cool's really stepped up and has made a good effort at uh, coming up with some rigid hardline stuff. You can get these fittings as well in the 13 by 10 or the 12 by 16, as I mentioned, the metal fittings. I think this is this is really, really good line of product. The only downside is the links that you see right here, um, the 40 centimeters long, that's as long as they make. So you're likely not gonna be able to do things like you see with Skunk Works behind me with long tubes because you can buy those tubes by up to like four feet, even eight feet long with some manufacturers, uh, which you can then cut it and do single long bends and stuff. You're gonna be stuck doing shorter runs with this and probably having to use fitting elbows or in a small case like the Parvum, this would have been perfect size as well. So there you go guys, Jace Two Cents looking at Alpha Cool's new hardline stuff. This video was a struggle to get through today with, you guys know my sense of humor and well, it just sort of wrote itself. <laughs> All right, make sure you guys keep following on the social media if you want to see more behind the scenes stuff of this guy right here. This Parvum 1.0, as you can see, I started to put radiators and things in there, ooh. But yeah, if you guys want to see more about that as it's happening, it's starting to get heavy. Make sure you follow on the social media, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. YouTube's a good place too to, to follow. Uh, I'm not doing build logs on that, like I said, I'm just doing in social, uh, media updates as well as at the end of course I'm going to be doing like a complete rundown of the system performance benchmarks and all that stuff So there we go. Hope you guys have enjoyed today's video. I enjoyed making it for you and once again, thanks for watching